Hello everyone, welcome to day 18th of Every Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. The question that we have in today is remove k digits. Here in this question, we are given a number in a form of string and we need to return k digits from it such that the remaining number is smallest in nature. For example, here the nums that is given to us is 1432219. The value of k happens to be 3. That simply means we need to re remove three digits from this number such that the remaining digits form the smallest number. The output would be 1 to 1, 9. We'll be talking about two approaches to solve this question. One, the brute force way, other, the efficient way using stacks. And let's quickly hop on to the PPT where I'll explain you this example as well as the approaches. So let's get started. Remove K digits, lead code 402. So let's try and understand the question. The question says we are given a string in the, that represents a number and we are given a value of k. So let's go step by step. In the first go, what I'm going to assume, let's assume that the value of k happens to be 1. Then the brute force way that clicks everyone out there is to remove one digit one by one from this string and generate all possible numbers and let's select the least one out of it. So let's walk through this example. Uh, let's assume the value of k happens to be 1 and in the first go I'll generate all possibilities. So let's delete 1 from here. What do we get? We get 4, 3, double 2, 1, 9. Let's delete this one now. We get 1, 4, 3, double 2, 1, 9. Let's move ahead. Let's delete this one. We get 1, 2, 1, 4, 2, 2, 1, 9. Let's delete this one. We get 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, 9. Let's delete this one. What do we get? 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, 9. Let's delete this one. What do we get? 1, 4, 3, double 2, 9. And in the last, let's delete this 9 and other digits remain. What do we get? 1, 4, 3, double 2, 1. So what? which one is the least one out there? The least one out there is this one. 1, 4, double 2, 1, 9. And now let's extend the same approach for higher values of k. If we want to do it, we can do the same approach once we have selected the number at each iteration k times. The overall time complexity would be order of n into k if we go by this approach, the brute force way out there, which is not that great. The interviewer will not be happy that you are solving it by the brute force approach. Can we improvise it? The answer is yes. How? We'll be using stacks for this purpose. So let's walk through the improvised approach. Let's take the same example that we just discussed. Here the numbers are 1, 4, 3, double 2, 1, 9 and the value of k has been specified as 3. So if you are standing at a particular number, at particular index, when can you make a decision to actually delete it? The answer is simple. As soon as you see a lower number to its right, you can immediately delete the current element. Why I am saying this? So let's assume you are at 4 right now and immediately you see on the right we have a lower number. That simply means that this number can be deleted because we are looking for the smallest possible number. This is the crux of the problem. If you have understood this, you have understood 90% of the algo. Now let's bring in stacks which will help us compute the answer. So let's get started. Let's take a stack and let's walk through the string that is given to us. The stack right now is empty as a result of which we'll simply make an insertion. So we one gets added. Next we see is four. What do we do? We check what is the peak most element in the stack. The peak most element of the stack is one, which is lower than the current element that we are at. The condition is not met. We'll simply go ahead and make an insertion for four. So 4 gets added. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is 3. Let's recheck the peak most element of the stack. What is the peak most element? The peak most element is 4. 4 happens to be of greater value than the current element which we are at, which is 3. As a result of which, it's time for deletion. So we'll simply go ahead and remove the topmost element from the stack. This 4 gets deleted and as a result of which, we'll reduce the value of k k value gets updated to 2 since we have deleted one element and also along with it we'll again check 
So what is the peak most element of the stack? The peak most element of the stack happens to be one, which is lower than the current element. As a result of which we simply make an insertion for three. So three gets added. Let's proceed ahead. Next again, we see a two. So we, what we will do, we'll compare it with the peak most element of the stack. What is the peak most element of the stack? It is three. Three happens to be of greater value than the current element. That simply means you can make a deletion. So three gets deleted and the value of K gets reduced. K gets updated to one. Again, let's do the same thing. After the deletion, what is the peak most element of the stack? It, it's one. One happens to be of lower value. As a result of which we can't delete one. We'll simply make an insertion for two. So two gets added. Let's proceed ahead. Next, we again see a two. So let's compare the peak most element of the stack with two. Both of them happens to be of equal value. We can't do anything as a result of which two again gets added onto the stack. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is one. So let's check the peak most element of the stack. It happens to be two. Two happens to be of greater value than one as a result of which it's time to delete two. So two gets deleted. This is gone. And along with it, the value of K gets reduced to zero. That means no more deletions are needed. We have identified all the elements that were to be deleted. To conclude, what elements have we finally deleted? This one, this one, and this one. So what is left? There are only two elements left, which is one comma two. Pretty simple and straightforward, no rocket science so far. And for the rest of the elements, you can simply add it to your result. So what do we have in stack? We have in stack two comma one. So you can generate the string something like this, one comma two, and whatever remaining elements are left, you can append it to your answer. So one two plus one nine gives you one two one nine, which is your result. Pretty simple and straightforward. No rocket sign throughout the algo. Let's walk through few more cases, which are equally interesting. So let's take this case. We have one four five three double two one nine. Let's walk through uh, this iteration as well so that you get a good hold of the concept. The first element that we see is one. The stack is empty. You make an insertion. Next element that you see is four. Four happens to be of greater value than the peak most element of the stack. You can't delete the peak most element of the stack. You add four to it. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is five. So five happens to be of greater value than the peak most element of the stack. You cannot delete the peak most element of the stack as a result of which five gets added. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is three. So as soon as you three see three, what is the peak most element of the stack? The peak most element of the stack is five. Five happens to be of greater value as, as a result of which you can delete five. So five is gone. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see uh, the peak most element of the stack happens to be four. We again make a comparison of four and three. Four happens to be of greater value than three as a result of which four also gets deleted. Let's proceed ahead. What is the peak most element of the stack? The peak most element of the stack is one. And what is the current element? It is three. Uh, it's not greater as a result of which three gets added onto the stack. How many elements have we deleted? Two elements have been deleted. So we reduce the value of K by two and it gets updated to one. That means we are looking for only one more deletion. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is two. So T U happens to be of lower value than the peak most element of the stack as a result of which three gets deleted from the stack. The value of K gets reduced to zero and uh, what is left in the stack? We only have one element left, which is one. And where are we currently? We are currently at this element. So this plus this will give you the result. What is it? Double two, one nine. In totality, the answer for this is one, two, two, one, nine. Pretty simple and straightforward. The same process that we have uh, followed in both these examples. Let's walk through the last example, which is equally interesting. Let's assume the input elements happens to be of one, three, five, seven, nine. So how do you handle such case? So let's walk through the same approach. The stack is empty. We make an insertion. The next element that we see is three. The peak most element is one. Since it's one, it is of lower value than the, uh, than the current element. As a result of which you can't delete it. You have to simply insert it. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is five. Five happens to be of greater value than three. You have to make an insertion. You can't delete it. Next we see is seven. 7 happens to be of greater value than 5, you have to make an insertion. You, then you see 9, 9 happens to be of greater value than 7, as a result of which you have to make an insertion. 
So what actually did happen? We have exhausted all the elements that were there in the input string and we still have value of k left. So in such case, what do you do? You simply pop out the last three elements out of the stack. So this gets deleted, this gets deleted, this gets deleted. What is left? 1 comma 3 is left and this becomes your result. So this was one corner case that most people tend to forget in this approach. To conclude it finally, let's quickly have a look at the coding section and you will get a good hold of the concept. We'll exactly follow the same steps as I have just talked here. Also this concept is nothing new. I have talked about this concept in my previous video as well. To be specific, daily temperatures was the one and I am attaching the link of the stack playlist where more such questions are described. So if you have got a good hold of this concept, do try those questions. It will strengthen the core concept that we have just talked about. To conclude, let's walk through the coding section. I have created a stack of characters. I have created an i variable for iterating over the nums array. Uh, for uh, i is less than nums dot length and k is greater than zero. Both of the conditions are important. What do we do? We check if my stack is not empty and the value of k is greater than zero. I check if my peakmost element of the stack happens to be of greater value than the current element which I am currently at in my string. If such case is met, I simply delete the topmost element of the stack and reduce the value of k. Otherwise, I make an insertion for adding the current element onto the stack and I increment the pointer for i. Once I am done with this, I go and check if my value of k happens to be greater than 0. This was the last case that we talked about. If it is, then I delete the top k elements from the stack. Moving ahead, it's time to build the answer variable. I created the answer string and I will iterate in the reverse fashion because uh, in stack the last element which is in the end was added to the top therefore you have to do it in the reverse manner. Once you have built the answer variable what do you need to do? You need to append the remaining elements if present in your nums uh, to the answer. This is also very important and along with that we didn't talk about one particular case. Assume that so far you have built the answer variable something like this triple zero two zero zero then you have to trim the uh, uh, the leading zeros as a result of which you have to reiterate you have, I have created a variable i equals to zero till the time i keep on seeing uh, the starting element as zero i keep on updating the pointer for i in the end what do i do i check whether my ans dot substring starting from the ith index happens to have a zero length that means overall all the elements happens to be of zero value then other if that is the case i simply return zero otherwise i return ans dot substring starting from the ith index here for this particular case i would point to this particular position and i'll return 2000 as my answer so let's try this up accepted 90 times faster pretty good and awesome the time complexity of this approach is order of n you're iterating through the input only once and the space complexity of your answer is again of order of n because you have created a stack. This brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. And don't forget to watch the stack playlist. It's very interesting. Trust me guys. Thank you.